What's up, everybody? This is Mark. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time or you're not subscribed already, be sure to click down below, hit that subscribe button. That really helps me in continuing to grow this thing. Um, I just want to say first and foremost, it's been pretty wild having you know this subscriber base blow up to have the last couple of videos I've done um, really gain some traction. And I, I really am genuinely very appreciative of all the feedback. Um, today, we're here to talk about the Phoenix Mercury, their hot start, and particularly Suge Sutton and how she's fit into that, why I'm excited about you know, what she can keep doing moving forward, what she's done already, um, and where the Mercury are headed. The Phoenix Mercury are 3-1 with victories over the Atlanta Dream, Washington Mystics, and the Las Vegas Aces, including their lone loss being against the Las Vegas Aces in the first game of the season. Part of what's made that even more uh, intriguing is that they've done that without star center Brittany Grinder, who has missed the opening of the season with a toe injury. Um, while it's hard to take away too, too much from this group, knowing like, you know, they're going to have to make some changes with BG back and she's a, going to be a focal point of both the offense and defense. It's hard to not be impressed with what they've done already. I've been really excited about, you know, just their play style, their, their, uh, sellout to, to make it happen. Um, and you know how it's kind of reaped the reward so far with the way it fits their personnel. So for reference right now, the Mercury are first in the league in both three-point attempts and three-point makes, while second in three-point percentage. They're shooting just about 38%, 37.6% at time of recording before the games on, on today, May the 25th. Um, it's been really exciting because like they're ostensibly playing four-guard lineups. Kalia Copper has been incredible. She's averaging almost 30 points per game to start the year on wild efficiency. Um, she's been a great player in the league for a long time, but it feels like she's taking a step forward or at least is, you know, being really highlighted at a high level inside this offense. What's been so fun in watching this is, like, they're playing pretty much four out, five out the entire time. And what they can do that's been so fun is, like, I was saying this to somebody the other day, like, Diana Taurasi, obviously the, the leading scorer in WNBA history, a tremendous player, um, one of the greats of our game. Um She's fit so well because she hasn't been tasked with doing too much. Like, she's just going to go out there and play out of her shooting gravity. What I mean by that, like, so much of what Phoenix is doing right now is playing with guard-to-guard -guard screens. And that is, A, something that the Las Vegas Aces have really made in vogue the last couple of years. And B, where the game is going to continue to head. So, like, the kind of threes you create is just as is more important than, than creating threes like it goes without saying like you know obviously you want to create threes with purpose not just create threes for the sake of it and i think when you look at what this mercury team is doing yes there's a lot of stuff off the dribble and you know they're able to 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 hit some really tough shots but it's the kind of dent they put into defense with their ability to shoot with their personnel and the actions they're choosing to use to get there i've been extremely impressed i mean they've, they're second in the league in pace right now they're playing very fast defensively they've been really active um they have done a ton of things to muck up like playing zone their latest game against the aces well i wouldn't say that natasha cloud shut down asia wilson asia wilson was still very good in this game they put their point guard who is one of the best defenders in the league natasha cloud on Asia Wilson so they could cross match and roam off of Kia Stokes when she was on the court, which made it really hard for Las Vegas to get some things going offensively and then in turn really propelled the, the Mercury forward in, in transition on offense. But what I really want to talk about today, I want to talk about Suge Sutton, who is the backup point guard for the Mercury that really came on last year. She's just doing some things that have me feeling like she can really be the X factor of a very good team this season. When getting started, I just want to, to give some background before we dive into this clip and why I really like it. Um, similarly to what I did with Caitlin Clark and Lee at Boston. Um, I just want to give some explanation on Suge. So Suge last year, um, she didn't have the most efficient season, but I think, again, when you look at in the context of what she was asked to do and what the Mercury were as a team, um, she did some really impressive things. She has like a lightning first step. She is so tough getting into the paint, um, just demonstrative getting to the rim. And she also sh showed some off the dribble shot making. Now it's not super consistent yet. I think continuing to hone in on consistency, especially as a, as a rim finisher is going to be big for her moving forward. But when you have somebody who has so much, uh, who commands so much attention when they can get into the paint already like that, 
she's going to have to be guarded out to three, especially when she has the ball in her hands, right? So with what the Mercury are doing now, like, you really cannot leave anybody on their team on guard currently. Even with Natasha Mack, they've done a really great job of getting her going, uh, you know, as a, as a handoff player, as somebody who's just making quick decisions with the ball and passing. I've actually been really impressed with her passing. She's averaging just under four assists. She's actually second on the team in assists per game currently, uh, which is wild because um, I just, it's been fun watching her game on earth. Um, but point being, this team is all about movement. It's very similarly, if you've ever watched the Indiana Pacers play basketball, it's very similar to what they do. A ton of cutting, a ton of movement in in the half court so that it's almost like you're playing transition in the half court. And when you're running with so many guards, like literally playing four guard lineups, that's really tough to guard. You cannot leave anybody alone because if something happens, there's a quick ball reversal and a handoff happens and you're sagging off of that, then there's a shot out of that. There's, there's a gap that, that gets put into your defense and that's really t- tough to deal with. So point being, you have to guard Suge all the time. She's a massive threat in transition. And her pick and roll play is really dynamic. So last year, she averaged, just for reference from Synergy, uh, she averaged 0.872 points per possession last season in pick and roll, which was like right around league average. So that's pretty good considering she's a backup point guard. Um, this year, granted, it is a small sample size, but through four games, Suge Sutton has a 1.07 points per possession pick and roll uh, efficiency from synergy. And that's including passes, not just shots she takes. That's fifth in pick and roll efficiency out of 36 players in the league who have run 10 plus pick and rolls this season. So that is really good. Point being this increase in pace in the half court and just in general has been huge for Shook, who is again, a player who's really great playing with pace, who is fantastic at using her speed to, to create easy offense, she is fit like an absolute glove. And for a team that is, they have like close to five max contracts and then like really like two full like contract spots and then the rest are training camp players, you need to get the most out of your players who are not on max contracts to make this roster really hit. And I think with what we're seeing from Suge, there's a real chance for that to happen. Um, I'm, it, I want to just dive into this clip really quick. I'm going to show you what's happening first and foremost, then we'll dive into it. So right here, obviously, Asia Wilson misses. Phoenix gets this going defensively. Suge brings the ball down court, denies an initial screen from Liz Dixon, calls out a play, double pin downs, Ka over top to Liz Dixon, finish. All right. So what I want to do with this, what I love about this is there's so much you can pick apart just in this, you know, 20 seconds of game time. So what I want to start with first, all right, immediately Shug gets the ball. Watch Phoenix Mercury head coach Nate Tibbetts as soon as they call this. All right. You see him right up here. All right. So I, I don't know what they call this play. Um, like, I don't know what they as a staff call this play, but it's just, I mean, it's a pretty basic concept. You know, you flow into double wide pin down. So wide means like you're, you know, opening up the lane for them to get inside. Um, again, when you're talking about a team, you have to guard everyone. You have Kelsey Plum all the way out here pressuring Suge Sutton because they're playing in a five out look. Um, well, they start in a five out look out of horns. So you want to, with, with the way that they're spread out, you don't want to give her a driving lane. So already you got Suge pressured like this. But again, going back, this is a play call. That's worth noting. It's a play call. She brings the ball down. But again, here's the next part. Liz Dixon comes up to set an early screen. She deny, uh, Suge Sutton denies the screen. Why does that matter? A lot of Phoenix right now, like going and watching their first four games, they are allowing a ton of like, and this is not like novel, like a ton of teams do this, especially like the Aces are a great example. Um, teams will come down and there's leeway to create an early offense. So even if you call a play call, you know, players have the opportunity to um, to try and capitalize on early offense. So like, yeah, oftentimes a player is going to come up and quit, set a quick drag screen or just a screen in general to have some kind of action going to play out of early offense. If like right here, Shug doesn't really see anything that she likes openly available. So she says, she calls off the screen from Liz um, and then calls out the play, make sure everybody's set and then goes. And then obviously, you know, 
with this, Ka had been fantastic in this game. The aces are showing and recovering. That's what they'd been doing on Ka because she, Jackie Young had really struggled to guard her in this game. Uh, and again, that's not necessarily like saying anything about Jack. That's more like the way Phoenix is playing is so hard because like they are so everybody on their team can dribble, pass and shoot to a degree. Like even Beck Allen, who is getting guarded by fours most often this year, when the aces played them the first time this season, the, the Mercury really got back into that game because they went to Beck Allen attacking Megan Gustafson off the dribble and they really struggled to contain that. So in this game, again, they're, the Aces are trying to contain this with some extra pressure. Ka hits the read over top to Liz, and then that's just a good jumper from her. I think, like, ultimately, this is, like, a solid result given the play um, from the Aces. But point being, I just think, like, this element from Shug Sutton is so key to what this team can be and what they want to do. I think last year and just in general, you know, settling down and, and picking spots and, you know, knowing when and and – when to get into sets or when to go in early offense. That's a really big differentiator for a backup point guard right now in the league. I've written about this a lot. Like there are just a handful of teams that are comfortable with their point guard position with how the game has shifted and how the dynamics have shifted and what's required of you to be a guard. Like you need to be able to guard your own position. You can't be a liability and you need to be able to shoot. You need to be able to get to the rim, but you also need to be able to slow down and, get people going. And I think Shug being able to get into this, Shug Sutton being able to slow down, set the play, and create easy offense, that is massive for a team that, again, going back, having a team like this, like they're constructed, getting the most possible out of your players that aren't on those max contracts is essential. And I think what we're seeing from Shug is a real possibility that we get there. Obviously, they have a very good starting point guard right now, Natasha Cloud. Natasha and Shug have played quite a few minutes together. Um, I think that's going to probably, I don't know, that might change once BG comes back. I'm interested to see how the lineups fluctuate. Right now, if you look strictly off on-off, Shug's on-off is not great. So on-off is like looking at, you know, plus minus when that player's on or off the court. But I think it's worth noting, like she played a lot in that first min- first game against uh, Las Vegas when they went down early and, and that impacts, you know, with how early it is in the year, plus minus can get impact heavily. What I do want to pull out though, if you look, so through PVP stats, great place to to dive into and understand data and, and lineups. When Shug and Kalia Copper play together without Natasha Cloud, so let's just say Shug is by default the point guard when Natasha is off the court. So when Shug Sutton and Kalia Copper play together. Granted, it has only been in 10 minutes, but the Mercury are plus 23.4 points per 100 possessions. So in other words, they're outscoring opposition by 23.4 points per 100 possessions when Shug and Ka play together. Is that going to continue throughout the year? No. But point being, we've seen so much positive already with these two in terms of what Ka's cutting ability is, how hard it is to guard her, and Shug's first step. So I think there's already a track here of some really good stuff being baked, in, baked into their bench lineups. And I just have a really good feeling about what Sugar's is going to be able to do for the team this year. So it's a, just a, you know, a quick video. We don't have a ton, you know, contextually of understanding yet, you know, how everything is going to play, what it's going to look like, how are they going to fit Brittany Griner back in? Obviously she's a phenomenal talent who's going to make a massive impact. I'm just so interested to see how they make that work. But again, Shook Sutton has a real chance to be an X factor for the Mercury this year. And they need her to be because they're a team with real aspirations in the playoffs. And I think with what we've seen so far, really good chance for that to happen. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to go sub to the sub to the channel down below. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm looking to keep doing more and more of these. Um, I have a couple of more long form things that I'm looking to, to, to get into as well. Um, but again, thank you to everyone for watching. Have a great rest of your day.